Alright everyone, how are we doing? Um, I want to make this one kind of conversational. I want to keep it pretty natural, pretty chilled. Uh, I think trying to condense this down into like the minimal possible time frame um, will kind of detract from the the content. And you know, if I if I want to like tell you a story or go off topic, um, I don't want to I don't want to stop myself from doing that. So. You know, if if you're here for like just a 10 minute video um, with some quick tips, how to like bang bang bang, uh, then this probably isn't for you. You know, um, maybe you can watch it in like two times speed or something. But, uh, but yeah, um... I I was influenced to do this video by Francis Kidd. He uh, recently dropped a video about 10 days ago talking about. Um, the five tips that you can pick up on as a beginner cyclist and uh, for me he really like uh, really hit home with the with the last with the last uh, tip which was to to join a local cycling club and like for me for those of you that don't know me personally um, then I'm still involved in my local cycling club which was uh, which is Binya Cycling Club and I've been a member of that club now for like 12 years uh, joined in 2008 and I need to re make a remake actually of the video where uh, I go through like how how I went from you know riding for a local club to um, you know to racing for a team and then to the present day uh, not so much the present day then because that was like three years ago but um yeah like really <laughs> i'm already rambling as you can tell but the the whole idea of this video is to try to um double down and expand on one important topic that i think for me just speaks uh speaks volumes and i know this is probably not going to um maybe the older audience then probably won't get as much out of this as the younger audience um, but I even I, I think personally uh, even if you're you know kind of coming into cycling late and you're in your 40s you're in your 50s um, which I know a lot of people are I've been been having messages from from lots of people of that age group uh, it, it could even uh, resonate with you you know you you can really get a lot out of joining the local cycling club and <clears throat> really there's not much to say apart from my own personal experience and how a cycling club has helped me and how I've been uh, seeing a cycling club grow the last mm, at least the last five years uh, development side you know how they really try to expand on you know, the success that they've already had so I mean the best place to start is going like way back to when I joined um, Binya and when I joined the cycling club, um, I, I joined because it was back then, at least 12 years ago, it was the only thing you could do. And I feel like in today's society, there's lots more that you can do instead of joining a physical cycling club. You could actually, um, you know, join a, a Facebook um, a Facebook group. You can join. Uh, you can join anything. Um, you can you can like learn on Reddit pages. You can you know learn from YouTube channels. You can learn from lots of different places. But I think the thing with a with a cycling club is that you get all the people obviously there physically. You can learn from them, watching them. You can learn from a lot of things that they do. Uh, but when I joined the cycling club, it was like it was. Kind of around about 150 members not all of them were serious not all of them were racing not all of them uh partook partake not all of them like uh participated in um you know the, the weekly sessions that the club was putting on there was always like a core cool group and it still is to a certain extent you know a core cool group of, of riders and people that um that still do you know the weekly sessions or the weekly rides and what I've really come to learn or when I well over the last couple of years but when I joined the cycling club it was very much like you know you are immersing yourself in something that you have absolutely no experience in and it's very easy I think to get lost in the world of the internet you know there's there's a search bar 
that can lead you down so many rabbit holes. And I think, you know, when you when you go to a cycling club, particularly when I was you know, 12 years ago, when I turned up, it was, uh, you know, a small group of people. Um, a lot of them were kind of, you know, 50, 60 years of age. And they take you under your wing. They would, uh, they would, you know, take you out on club runs. And I think this is something that I don't know that I've spoken about before, but it's almost like a blueprint to uh, to how you develop as a young rider. I know the demographic that I have that watch these videos, and I do a little bit of digging as well. And a lot of them are, uh, you know. 25, 30, but mainly, you know, 30 and over, 40, 50 even. And what I can speak to to you guys is that, you know, chances are maybe you guys have come in late to the sport or you have um, children who are starting cycling. And the blueprint that I picked up on, not so much when I was in the cycling club or in the system, but, you know, now or the last couple of years looking back on it, was really the first things first is to join that cycling club and when you join that cycling club you can get so much free information like it's almost information overload to a certain extent um, for the next you know next few months next few weeks but what I really learned was that when you when you hang out with you know people that are twice your age three times your age people that have been racing, you know, in, in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 60s, and they're passing on, you know, small things like, you know, you'd go on your first club ride, which to me, as a as a 15 year old, um, my very, 14 year old actually, um, my very first ride was a club run. And the club run was over onto the Gower, which was about a 28 mile ride, you know, there and back. So probably took us around two and a half hours, you know, club run pace with a cafe stop as well. But what I learned from that ride is, on a mountain bike, <laughs> that everybody would look at, look out for you, but you know you'd never be left behind. But that they'd always be willing to share something with you. I think at a, at a club run level, club run level or club ride level for beginners, you know entry level, where the average speed is like you know 10 to to 40 mile lower sort of thing, they'll always look out for you. And you know, hey. If you've got some comments, I'd love to hear them down below. Like for your, you know, your experiences at your local cycling club, or if you've been involved in cycling clubs over the years, or even if you haven't, um, and you're involved on online kind of cycling clubs or Facebook pages, then let me know in the comment section. Um, but riding, you know, with that group of people, um, it's that kind of, you know, the social aspect. You, I actually learned how to, or what a lunge was, like lunging in a sprint. Um, on a club run, uh, not that I had any place to be, you know, sprinting or lunging on a club run, um, but that's where I actually learned how to do that. And then, you know, after a couple of, well, I guess a couple of months, because I was quite um, nervous about the progression and everything, um, you know, there was a couple of, you know, when you when you're kind of in the cycling club zone, you pick up on, you know, a number of people who are. Um, head and shoulders above the rest in cycling clubs like you pick up on the weekend warriors you pick up on the people that do the chain gangs you pick up on the people that race the people that time trial and uh, what you want to do is you want to try and n not so much in infiltrate this is kind of like the wrong word but you want to um, create that that bridge and that step so that you feel like you can be included in a way with those groups and um, you know, in a cycling club, there's there's always going to be different kind of pockets of people. You know, there's going to be, you know, the cyclocross people, the time trial people, the, the just the social people, and um, you know, depending on where you want to go and what you want to do, you know, you, you really want to try and bridge to those groups. And um, even for me, like when I was a junior at Binya Cycling Club, um, I, I still had Binya as my my club. But I was I was lucky enough to be sponsored um, by a local bike shop, and there was a group of us, group of young riders, sponsored uh, by a local bike shop uh, called Treads in Swansea, and we uh, we went to the Junior Tour Wales. And we had some you know, we had bikes given to us, kit given to us, and uh, you know we went to a lot of the National Junior Road Series all across the UK, and. 
to a certain extent, I was kind of away from the cycling club, but it was it was always there. You know, I could always go back to it during the week. I could ride club runs, things like that, whenever I wasn't racing. And I still do now, like I say. Um, it, it's never dawned on me to even, you know, think about not trying to fit that in. Um, but I think even when I was racing, you know, for that little setup on that, that little team, even at the Junior Tour Wales and the Junior National Series, we had, you know, a couple of older heads of state at Binia Cycling Club that, you know, had, had raced at a very, very high level um, in the UK. Like they were well known, well known in Wales, but well known across the UK, um, and still are today. And they they were very much kind of interested in in my racing exploits and interested in, you know, how I was doing as a junior, how how the races were going. They were giving me tips. They were like, oh, I know that course. Like we raced up that climb in like 1978, and um, you know that was very very interesting to me. And um, you know, it's very easy, I think, particularly when you're you're young and naive, to to kind of go, well, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not even going to turn to the older guys, but really that's where the hidden gems are, I think. Um, and I know the way the sport has moved on with technology and things like that, um, you know, to a certain extent, maybe they can't have that insight into it. But in terms of the racing, the tactics, the instincts, knowing the courses, you can really tap into that at a cycling club. And then <clears throat> what we had, I had a great support network at, at the cycling club where, you know, I got really friendly with one guy in particular um, who basically loved collecting bikes. He loved tinkering with bikes, loved doing things with his bikes. Had, you know, loads of bikes to the point where, you know, he couldn't keep them in his garage. He was keeping them in, in like the attic and, you know, underground and things like that. Like there was not a space. And um, really getting to know him and to, you know, become very friendly with him. He was offering to do bike maintenance for me, you know, as a kid that I was, and my parents not knowing bike maintenance themselves. Um, you know that that really helped me then to to take that pressure off of you know yes I have to look after my bike but then he was he was there to like you know fi fix things for me and, and to just have a cup of tea as well more than anything else while while we were doing things so that side of it like cycling club is is very important for for that those social aspects the friendships the the helping hand you can get through things like that and then the blueprint that i talk about where you know you start on a club run for example it's a very basic beginner level um you learn things you learn group etiquette i know francis uh touched on this group etiquette is massive man like uh even to this day you know there's people that don't pot out pot out point out potholes <laughs> and uh, you know you can easily break uh, blow a tire out break a wheel um go off the handlebars and break something worse um, from from bottle riding, uh, bottle dodging. Um, so you know those things are important. You know group etiquette. You learn all that, and then you can take that further. You know you can take that further by doing, um, you know the chain gangs. You know, but the chain gangs and the faster, longer rides where you slowly build up to them, where you hang out with these, not so much the weekend warriors, but you know the guys who who race or they, they take their training seriously. Um, you know, by riding with them to a certain extent, um, you know, not only do you learn, you know, in a very different way to, to when you're racing, but if say we're going out on a 75 mile ride on a Sunday morning and we meet at the bus stop at eight o'clock and there's only six of us or something, um, and I'm just, you know, a 16 year old, 15 year old, I really like not really had much experience of 75 mile rides. The difference is that you know these guys will, will look after you, but they'll also give you a hard time, and uh, in a good way to the point where hopefully they won't just drop you in the middle of nowhere. Like I think those those days like should at least be long gone. But um, you know th what they'll do is you know you, you can easily say to them, look guys, you know I'm going to sit on for 50 miles, um, and and like you guys can do your turns or you know ride um, as efficiently as you want as a group. I'm just going to sit on, and I'm quite happy to sit here as the odd rider. To five riders and you obviously you haven't got a partner to, to hook up with to ride two abreast you know you just suck it up and you know especially when you're a newcomer or beginner to the sport you you'll absorb it quickly like you will absorb it quickly you'll understand how the group works you'll understand um you know why these riders are taking a drink now why are they eating now like what why are oh, we going down the descent why is this guy putting a jacket on now um oh it's because you can see like the cloud coming in the distance so it's like it's things that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on the social rides, but then you would pick up on the faster rides. 
And what the faster riders will, will tend to do is, once you've made that steady progression into them, you know, it's almost going back to square one and you're, you're having to go through that progression again during those rides. Um, but you will, you will kind of see, you know, a lot of people, you know, when they get to that level, they'll, they'll smash themselves on those rides. 75 mile, 80 mile rides on a Sunday and then they can't ride for, you know, three or four days. And when consistency is key in anything, in cycling and progression and anything like that, um, you really need to think as well, as you get stronger and as you get more capable of managing that effort you can do on the ride rather than just riding it and hanging on to the group, you'll start to learn that, you know, if I manage my effort today and I, you know, instead of doing 10 minutes on the front, I do five minutes on the front with, with my partner, um, then I can go out and do a ride tomorrow. You know, I'm not too tired to ride tomorrow. And eventually you'll start to learn like how to put these things together <clears throat> and how to ride multiple days and how to how to fix like with with Binya we have you know we have um, a structured ride which is like an hour and a half two hour session on Saturday a longer ride on a Sunday you can start to think okay if I struggle on this one but I can do this one um, how can I how can I like fuse the two so I can ride double days and uh, not double days but you know two days back to back and then if I got a chance like to ride in the week and it's a chain gang on a Wednesday how do I make sure that I don't you know leave myself totally drained on the weekend that I can't ride well on Wednesday night so you know the people in the club will obviously understand these they've probably been through that situation themselves and um, you know it doesn't matter how old you are how young you are when you join that cycling club um, always ask questions like always always be curious like curiosity man is like um, it's weird because like you know obviously you learn from doing things or you learn from you know failing you, you get dropped from the group in the chain gang or something but then, you know, if you don't know why you got dropped, then how are you gonna improve? And I think, you know, when you've finished the chain gang and, you know, like today's modern technology, you don't even have to go back to the, the clubhouse and have a cup of tea and ask the rider, oh, how, did, how did you drop me there, you know? You can actually just, you know, text the guy or text the girl and go, so what happened? And, um, you know, you're constantly learning and, and I think like with a club set up, um, particularly one that, you know, you could, you could say to them like, is there a blueprint? Is there a way that I can, you know, make my way through to to riding with the top riders in the club? And then once you once you're riding with these top top riders in the club, and you become kind of one of them, I guess, then you you can start to say, you know, once you've become very friendly with them, you know, let let's go to races together. You know, let's let's do a team time trial. You know, a four up team time trial. Um, you know, let let's start working together as a group we can we can actually make a name for a club and we can make a name for you know ourselves as riders in a local area but also you know in our country or in our county um, but like it's very easy for me to say but try and find the time as well to while you're doing that if somebody new jumps in the scene like while well, you're like you just got to the top or whatever if somebody jumps in like make sure to grab them and bring them and like show them the ropes and because nobody knows better than you you know if you've been there and you've done it and you've been through the system like always remember to take care of that next like generation that's coming behind you because um they're just as important as you so yeah all right well that's 20 minutes so i managed to get like most of what i wanted to say out of the way like i said it's not going to be for you if you wanted a short video but um I have to say what's on my mind sometimes, you know? Like, I can't just sit at the camera and condense it into 10 minutes, because like I said, it just takes the contact side out of it and potentially we just miss the um, hidden gems or whatever they are. So, uh, anyway, uh, I, hope, uh, I hope lockdown's been kind to you, wherever in the world you are. Uh, it's certainly being kind to you, kind of, with the sun. So uh, something to be thankful about, um, but no, seriously, like I, I know, I know, like it's not the be all or end all, like being a member of a cycling club or a cycling community, but it certainly helped me. And uh, you know, if in some way it helps you, or there's you know some kind of takeaway from this, then you know, it beats me that that solves that solves you know a tiny puzzle maybe in in you know your life. Yeah. Anyway, look, 
I'm, I'm done here. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm super pumped. I got this less than half an hour. I gotta be honest with you. Um, so yeah. Anyway, if this helped in any way, um, you know, if you watched it in two times speed, then perfect, because the video is half the length, and that's brilliant. Uh, but make sure you hit that like button, and if you're new, hit that subscribe button, and uh, leave a comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts on cycling clubs. If you've ever been a part of them in the past, and what they've given you, um, it's really, really important. So. Let's.